the legal system sees pets as property. However, I think if you talk to most people, their pet is family. <coughs> it just made me think about what do people do that don't have resources but love their dog and they can't even afford food. This week, we were in Springfield, Massachusetts because of a comment from Joyce Hanasek. Joyce tagged her friend Kim George, who started a nonprofit called Kane's Crusade. I got 10 families, one, two. We started out as a pit bull advocacy group. <laughs> Kane, are you having fun? We come down here every single week to bag food. We decided to help underserved and vulnerable populations so that they don't have to surrender their dogs to shelters. I need that still. Right now we have over 60 families, over 80 dogs. No, no, this is over here. Kim and her Cane's Crusade volunteers deliver food and equipment donated by local businesses to families in Springfield. They also help them get access to much needed animal services that they couldn't otherwise afford. So, you know, the families that we serve are veterans, they're disabled, elderly, people that tend to fall through the cracks. Oh, this, is, this is a picture of all our dogs. Raya, Bella. Hey, handsome. It's Otis. It's really not about delivering dog food to people. When we deliver food, we're saying, not only does your dog matter to us, but you matter to us, you know? And that's a really powerful message. Kane, go lay down, please. Yeah, I know, life is hard. Okay, go on. Can you maybe sit with him or? Thank you. So Springfield is the third largest city in Massachusetts. The first motorcycle was built here. The first car engine was built here. It's the home of Dr. Seuss. It's the birthplace of basketball. But there is a high rate of poverty. The poverty rate in Springfield is more than double the national average. And what's experienced here persists throughout the country. As more than 40 million Americans live in poverty today, about 23 million dogs and cats also live in poverty with them. So when it's hard to afford the basics for yourself, how do you care for your pet? To be honest, I don't think I would be alive without him. My depression and my anxiety is so low that he helped me with everyday stuff. Over 80% of our volunteers are the people we serve. Uh, and you a good boy? Oh, pretty boy. Aww. If your true best friend is a dog or a cat and you live on a fixed income, if we can figure out a way in the community to help you keep your best friend. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's freeing up resources just by keeping pet families together. Cover your mouth. To me, I can't do anything at the federal level. I can't do anything at the worldwide level. All I can do is what I can do every day. And I know that I can feed dogs. Lucky, makes me happy. When, I, when I'm with him, it means everything. You know, I, I wish I could explain myself how much he means to me. And I'm grateful, I'm grateful, you know that. It's easy to look the other way and not learn what other people deal with. It's inconvenient, it's messy, but there's also a beautiful side to it. You see the strength and the resiliency of people on how they can not just survive, but actually thrive. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you know anyone else making a difference like Kim, tag them in the comments right now and we'll go tell their story next. If you missed last week's episode, let me introduce you to Daniel, a chocolatier living in Brooklyn. And if you like what you watched, subscribe so you can find out exactly what city we're gonna be in next. I'll see you soon.